Saukat, myself and six others, <coughs> Prashanna Kumar, Zargar, uh, Arvind, <coughs> we started Diabetes India way back in 19, early 90s. So it's my own home, so need not be introduced. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, well, this is a topic which I chose. <coughs> Diabetic food pathogenesis and management of in Indian context. And we have uh, three brilliant uh, and very experienced chairpersons to guide us, navigate us through the session. Thank you for chairing, sir. <clears throat> well, diabetic food, the impact on healthcare. The diabetic food is the second most important problem in the world as far as diabetes care is concerned. Diabetes mellitus is the leading cause of non-traumatic lower extremity amputation in USA. 15% of patients with diabetes mellitus develop foot pulses, especially great toe or the metatarsophalangeal joint on the medial side. Significant <coughs> subset who develop an ulceration will ultimately undergo amputation. Experience has shown that amputation rate can be reduced to half if you take a proper care of the diabetic foot at the very onset. Now, a review was published, it was a meta analysis in 2021, that 15 to 25% of diabetic patients will suffer from diabetic foot ulcers. 85% of diabetic amputes suffer from uh, of diabetic foot in, uh, ulcerations first and then become serious gangrene or infection. And prevalence of diabetic foot was found to be 6.3 percent is a meta-analysis. And the prevalence of new chronic diabetic foot ulcers increased from 20.7 to 33.1 percent. The very significant rise in diabetic chronic foot ulcers. This is the usual site in most cases we find get the ulcer. This is the 15 percent of patients with diabetes develop foot ulcer in the great toe in the first metatarsal of phalangeal joint. This was a, it was a publication way back in 1999. We had a symposium called Complications of Diabetes in Indian Scenario and I was the course, course master way back in 1999. And the, the presenter was none less than Dr. Uh, Sarath Pense, about whom you much have heard. He was, he was one of the greatest workers on diabetic foot. If you look at his own data on 1680, Subject to diabetic foot, 53% were males. Mean duration was around 9 years. And type 1 diabetics were 2.3% and the rest were type 2 diabetics. So type 1 diabetics are also susceptible to develop diabetic foot. Now profile of diabetic foot complications and associated complications a multivariate study from India. This was done at four places. In diabetes Research Center, Chennai, Government Rajaji Medical College, Madurai, CMC Velore and AIMS New Delhi. And what did they find? <clears throat> if you look at the case series, it was a 462 patients from Chennai, 387 patients from Madurai, and uh, 253 patients from CMC Velour, and two, uh, 217 patients from AIMS New Delhi. The mean duration of diabetes was slightly higher in the AIMS group, it was 9.1%, but the other groups varied from 5 to 7%, 7 years, sorry, not percent. And the plasma postcranial glucose was very high. The serum cholesterol was higher in the uh, Chennai group, in the Madurai group, but it was lesser in the AIMS group. Serum creatinine was higher, much higher in the AIMS group because maybe the long duration of diabetes. So the study revealed that the prevalence of neuropathy was in 15%, peripheral vascular disease was 5%. I beg to draw your attention here because diabetic foot in the West as a predominance of peripheral vascular disease. But in India, we have more of neuropathy. The experts will be following me, <coughs> will be definitely putting more, more light on that. Infection was present in 7.6%. Infection rate varied from 6 to 11%. And three per subjects had minor or major amputations done in this series from four centers almost spread over, all over the country. Now, predisposing factors for developing diabetic foot ulcers and complications. All of us know poor glycemic status, <coughs> a good tight glycemic control definitely helps in reducing <coughs> diabetic foot ulcers. Neuropathic, we have more of neuropathic foot, abnormal foot biomechanics, peripheral vascular disease, a small contributor, diabetes with chronic renal failure, poor wound healing, blind partially sighted patients, especially elderly, smoking, history of previous ulcers or amputation, large calluses <coughs> are often precursors to overlie ulcerations, elderly patients, patients with high alcohol intake because of additional peripheral neuropathy because of alcohol. Precipitating factors are like friction and ill-fitting footwear, <coughs> untreated callus, 
foot injuries, burns, corn plasters, nail infections, <coughs> healing affliction in patients confined to bed, especially patients with stroke, foot and deformities, and Charcot's foot. <coughs> How hyperglycemia contributes to foot ulcer? The contribution of hyperglycemia is an independent determinant of risk factor for developing complications in diabetics. Several biochemical mechanisms consequent to metabolites of glucose can alter the numerous cellular pathways both intra and extracellularly and can have adverse effect in the vascular wall. <coughs> to give a brief note of them, increase in non-enzymatic glycation through proteins and advanced glycation end products, activation of the polyol pathway, activation of diacyl glycerol and protein kinase C cascade, oxidative stress, insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia. Looking at hyperglycemia per se is the major risk factor. What it does, it initiates chronic inflammatory response. Diabetic state per se is a chronic inflammatory state. The inflammatory response involves multiple mediators such as c reactive protein, TNF-alpha, interleukins, um, MIR-217, 223C, and chain of interleukins, they are high in the, in the blood in patients with type 2 diabetics and more so those are poor glycemic control. Depletion of uh, nicotinamide and an India or NADP source, which is necessary for detoxification of reactive oxygen species and for synthesis of vascular nitric oxide, which is a vasodilator. Result an increase in oxidative stress on nerve cells and increase in vasoconstriction leading to ischemia, so nerve cell injury and apoptosis. Abnormal glycation of nerve cell proteins and inappropriate activation of the protein kinase C cascade, further nerve dysfunction linked to stenosis of arterial lumen. <laughs> so persistent hyperglycemia leads to endothelial cell dysfunction and smooth muscle cell abnormalities in the peripheral arteries, result in decrease in endothelial derived vasodilators leading to vasoconstriction. Hyperglycemia is associated with increase in thromboxane A2 and enhanced risk of <coughs> plasma hypercoagulability. Now coming to the neuropathic part, <coughs> The peripheral sensory neuropathy, when the small fibers are affected, we get loss of pain, thermal and, and sympathetic denervation because of mixed fiber involvement, and the large five sensory loss uh, fiber leads to loss of vibration and uh, prior perception. Loss of normal protective mechanism allows the patient to sustain repeated or major trauma to the foot without knowledge of injury. <coughs> Disordered proprioception causes abnormal weight bearing while working on subsequent uh, formation of callus and ulcers. Motor neuropathy is wasting and weakness of the intrinsic muscles, flattening of the arc of the foot, migration of the fibrofatty pad, pad. <coughs> motor and sensory neuropathy lead to abnormal muscle, foot muscle mechanisms, mechanics and structural changes. <coughs> and autonomic neuropathy leads to loss of regulation of vessel tone, excess of blood flow to the bones, as we know sarcot force is one of them. Loss of sweating on the foot, so it's a dry foot, and altered <coughs> blood flow, local shunt and reduced capillary blood flow and ulcer formation. So all motor neuropathy or sensory neuropathy or, <coughs> motor or autonomic neuropathy all have an adverse effect on the diabetic foot genesis. Now diabetic neuropathy and foot problems in India, <coughs> the data I could collect, peripheral neuropathy was varied from 19.1 to 27.5% in different studies, the most important study was published way back by Dr. Ramchandran and also Ketal. Then in India, 25% per hospital admissions and 35% of total hospital days are because of foot problems. Multicenter studies showed that prevalence of neuropathy was 15%, PVD was 5%, infection was 7.6%. Study done in South Asians in UK also had revealed higher prevalence of neuropathy compared to peripheral vascular disease in those who have migrated from India and settled in South, East, in South Asia and settled in UK. The abnormal structure of the foot, you can see the great toe <coughs> abnormality. I think Dr. Gansham Goel will put more light on that. Clawed toes, a clawed foot with local zygantism, the second toe on the left foot, and ulcers and fungal infection in the right foot. Infections in toes and deformities of both feet, the callus, Now, the prevalence of peripheral vascular disease, <coughs> well, Mohan et al. in way back in 95 showed that it was of 3.9%. Pense had shown about 3.79%, all were less than 5%. But if you look at the Western series from Germany, Greece, US, or UK, they were all more 16 to 44%. 
the contribution of PVD in Indian diabetic foods is lesser. It is not to be ignored, but it is lesser as compared to the Western data. Now, isomic diabetic work may present as intermittent claudications is due to vascular disease involving the descending aorta and branches. They are narrowing of occlusion of small arteries like vessels of the plantar and the distal arches that is more important. If it is is obstruction higher up, it can be easily treated with obstruction in the arcs. The the collaterals is definitely difficult to treat. Digital arteries get converted into end arteries due to loss of (coughs) anastomosis. The foot can present as cold foot, absent pulse, rest pain, ulceration from localization, ultimately leading to digital necrosis and gangrene. As a teacher of medicine, I always advise my students that never forget to examine the feet and the pulses, especially the repulses, dorsalis pedis, and tibialis pulses in any patient you, you examine. Because hardly anybody examines below the belt. It is very, very important that in a diabetic patient, we should always examine the pulses in the foot and the foot arches. Arterial gangrene, you can, it's something ray like gangrene you can get. You can get a very gangrene in a particular area. Gangrene with associated infection. Now, infection and poor wound healing, a major problem in India. Hyperglycemia renders circulating polymorphs defective in chemotaxis and adherence to phagocytes, phagocytosis. Hyperglycemia interferes with the crucial activity of phagocytic cells, impacts the respiratory burst. Glucose gets converted, diverted into the polyl pathway, consuming NADPH, impairing generation of free radicals and uh, hydrogen peroxide required for killing intracellular killing of the phagocytes. So you can see here that instead of entering this cycle, glucose enters this cycle and the NADPH is taken by it. That is why this respiratory burst is definitely suppressed and the, and the, uh, <coughs> the phagocytic property of the leukocytes is depressed. The counts may be normal. Infection and poor healing a major challenge in Indian context. They may not be obvious neuropathy or ischemia, but the background is neuroischemic. Walking in barefoot, rodent bite, which is not seen probably in other countries. <clears throat> Poor glycemic status, hyperglycemia renders circulating polymers defective in chemotaxis. Hyperglycemia interferes with the crucial activity of the res- phagocytes, impairs of respiratory burst. Glucose gets converted into polyol pathways, I have already discussed. <clears throat> now, intradigital infections. <clears throat> Most of us come across this in our own patients. Now, cellulite is superficial gangrene. Cellulite is multiple ulcers. <clears throat> Infection with bulla formation, digital infection with gangrene due to endarteritis. You can see the tip of the toes are gangrenous here, is arterial gangrene. Soft tissue infection with gas gangrene. <clears throat> now, coming to the gradation of the foot ulcers is a Wagner ulcer classification system. Grade 0 is no ulcerations, grade 1 is superficial ulcerations, grade 2 is the deep ulceration which penetrates into tendons, bones and John capsules and fascia with no abscess or ostomize. This is the gray zone. One has to bring the foot back from this gray zone. With abscess and orostomialities, grade 4 is gangrene, and grade 5 extensive gangrene. Now, <coughs> management starts with the patient education, careful selection of footwear, daily inspection of feet, keep the skin clean, avoid self-treatment of foot problems, do not walk barefoot from consultation with healthcare providers if any abnormality arises. Now, management of physicians here, <coughs> diabetologists, internal medicine specialists, endocrinologists, and metabolic management, infection control, and maintenance of general well being. So, glycemic control, metabolic control, vascular performance should be normal, is our job. Podiatrists to take care of the Nielsen skin, surgeons for ulcer care, issue debris, maintenance, salvage, orthopedicians for management of bone deformities and osteomyelitis, vascular surgeons for bypass and anastomosis. Plastic and reconstructive surgeons for skin grafting and home limb savage. <coughs> Institute, so what do you, we people are supposed to do? Institute good glycemic control. <coughs> one thing, when there is a foot ulcer in diabetic, we should avoid disinfectants like the <coughs> povid and iodine because they coagulate the granulation tissues. It's better to irrigate with normal saline rather than put the disinfectants. The surrounding cellulite is often due to mul- multiple organisms, so appropriate antibiotic has to be chosen. Broad spectrum antibiotics to cover against gram positive cocci, staph, MSRA, group A and group B streptococci, and aerobic gram negative bacilli, as well as coverage to obligate anaerobes. So, this is the strategy for controlling infection in diabetic foot, even if there is no fever and even the pain is less. 
local application of antibiotics, imaging and x-rays of the foot, Doppler studies, timely re <coughs> referral to surgical intervention. This is also our responsibility that when we realize that is a going from grade 2 to grade 3 or even the stage of grade, uh, grade 3, uh, we should refer to a surgical colleague for proper debridement. Yeah. There is a patient in March 11, she came with this type of foot. 17th March, surgery was done and 9th of May, you can see it, the healing foot. Last slide, potential biomarkers for preventing foot ulcers, inflammatory biomarkers, <clears throat> a long list, metabolic biomarkers, arginine, eye solution, leucine, and threonine, genomic biomarkers, <clears throat> HF1 gene, eloxazine, elastase gene, histone gene, neutrophilic associated lipoclane gene, proteonomic biomarkers, <clears throat> and microbial biomarkers. Ideally, combine novel markers with clinical observations and compare these results with the best routine test as current clinical benchmarks and even quantitative methods can be used to validate the correlation between these novel potential markers and clinical observation of diabetic foot ulcer, avoiding aggregation, exaggeration of the value of new platform. Thank you very much.